Welcome to The Popish Plot. I'm Nate. And I'm Jessica. And today we're here with another fabulous installment of our Catholic Scientist series. Today we're going to be talking about... Uh, Sister Mary Kenneth Keller of the Sisters of Charity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. All right, that, that's a lot of words. Yes. So I am guessing that she is either a religious sister or a nun. Um, if we're using the technical term, she would have been a religious sister as she was not cloistered. Okay, so she's out in the world. She's doing mm -hmm. stuff. Presumably, sciencey stuff because yes. this is our scientist. This is our Catholic scientist series. So tell me about Sister Mary Kenneth Keller. Well, if you look at our set dressings of random stuff we literally just grabbed from this room, they probably would have a rough idea of what she was known for in science. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing discs, big floppy discs, little ones, uh, circuit boards and cables. I'm guessing she works with computers. You would be correct. Okay. Well, but she must have been working with like old computers because otherwise I feel like we would, you know, be more aware of her because it would be more like a modern kind of a thing. Well, technically she was modern in that she was born December 17th in 1913. Uh, but I meant like modern computer wise. We've worked with stuff that she helped in some ways. Okay. Um, her birth name was Evelyn Marie Keller and she was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, presumably to a, uh, I believe it was to a uh, Catholic, to a devoutly Catholic family. Yes. You don't get too many uh, people joining joining re religious orders uh, from outside of those type of things. It does happen occasionally, but it's usually a later in life yes. kind of a progression. And she, as a teenager, was interested in joining the Sisters of Charity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So she joined in 1932 and made her final vows in... 1940. So she would have been like 29 or 19 when she joined. Mm -hmm. So just out of high school kind of a thing. Yep. Um, after she joined, she then went on to, in 1943, get her Bachelor's of Science in Mathematics. Okay. And in 1953, she got her Master's of Science in Mathematics and Physics. And she went to DePaul University for both of those in Chicago. Okay. Um... So, still, we're, 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 we're early early in computer years kind yep. of a thing. So, um, I'm guessing she was working with some of the earlier, uh, like, programming languages and things. Yes. In fact, um, she, during the time b before her PhD and also during afterwards, but, you know, in, for the story now, she was affiliated with many different universities, um, Dartmouth. Purdue, University of Michigan, and University of Wisconsin. Okay. Um, at the time she was at Dartmouth, she was the only female in their program for computer sciences. Wow, all right. Um, and most things about her life say that she also helped them in creating the computer programming language of BASIC. Okay, so uh, for those who are not familiar, uh, I'm not terribly familiar, <laughs> but I, I know a little bit... Um, BASIC was actually a language that was designed to be simplified so that more people could do computer programming because before that, the languages were actually quite complex and tended to only be uh, studied and learned by people who were doing uh, mathematics and or uh, science. Yes, yes. Before this, people actually like remembered the 10 digits of ones and zeros for each binary thing and... This was a language that then got used for other things. Like, I was reading that we, we've actually used a variation of this because DOS was based off of this. Okay. It's mm -hmm. actually, I believe, eight digits of binary. Okay, eight. Because that, that's why everything is eight. Uh, I, there's so many zeros. I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she was one of the possibly... Very first, but one of the very first in general, at the very minimum, the first American woman to get a PhD in computer sciences. That's she, impressive. She got her degree on June 7th, 1965. The same day at a different school, the first American man got his degree. 
And there's like some debate. Some people say this was the first degree worldwide. Some people are like, I can't say for sure that, you know, in another country they had essentially the same degree but with a different name. And of course, there's the, there's the question of uh, the the timing of, of the two different graduate graduation ceremonies. Cause... Yes, yes. No one was keeping exact track of exactly when each ceremony was to be like, all right, they got handed their piece of paper at this time and the other one that... You know, I, I even checked. I'm like, if, if he was like two time zones over, she probably got it first. But they were both, you know, central time zone. Mm. <laughs> All right. So she's got her PhD. And now what does she do? Well, she then got assigned, because of course she's part of religious order, to Clark College, which is spelled Clark with an E. Because apparently there it became Clark University. But there's a Clark University without an E that's a completely different Clark University. Okay. Um, and at the time, it was a private Catholic women's college. Um, looking at it, apparently it went co-ed in the 70s, but, you know, during this time, it was all female. Okay. Um, she then founded and directed the computer science department for 20 years, and it's thought that this was the first computer science department for a small school. Okay, so, like, big schools probably had them, but, yeah, for yeah. for well, smaller well, like, schools. The list of ones are, you know, yeah, she no, was going she to was Ivy going... League and the, the big major state ones, you yeah. know. This is a college that I have to denote. It's not the other college with exactly the same name, just spelled differently. So it's, you know, it's not big. Um, she apparently also even got, like, a grant to start it up because okay. they, they wanted her to work on making um, computer science more available to everyone. Okay. Um, after she retired, they renamed the Science Center to the Keller Computer Center in her honor. Um and along with just, you know, just teaching, okay, she was also a very strong advocate for women in computer science, which is something that nowadays we don't think about as much. But when computer science came out, it was not already gendered according to gender rules. So there were a number of women who got in early on. Sure. To do stuff because it wasn't, oh, this is men's work because no one worked with a computer before. Yes, it, so. was, it, was, it was new to everybody. So therefore nobody could go and lay claim and say, no, no, this is this is men's work. You don't belong here. Yes. So it was, you know, a, a major thing to, you know, get it where, you know, it wasn't just this is a guy's job. But look, look, we can all press in the, the ones and zeros. Yes. <laughs> Air use those punch cards. I'm so glad I didn't have to learn on the punch cards. Our teacher had like one to be like, this is what I used to teach. <laughs> I've, I've talked to some people who use the punch cards and apparently uh, they could be really frustrating at times because you had to get all of the punches exactly right or you had to scrap them. And start over from scratch because you couldn't go and like patch over the, the, the bad punch with like tape or anything. You had to mm -hmm. actually have a fresh card. Yes. Uh, along with working to have women in computer science, she also was big on increasing computer use in education. Okay. Um, she predicted the idea that computers would result in an information explosion, even though uh, she died January 10th, 1985, so it was before the modern day, I have a supercomputer in my pocket yeah. level of use, but, but, but you know, still, but she still, saw it coming. <laughs> 1990s, where, 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 the, where, where the internet started, you know, coming out, so I mean, she just kind of missed it. Well, for public use, you know. Yes, but that's, mm -hmm. what, that's what I mean, yeah. where it became... Yep, she also founded the... Commonplace, that's the word. Yep, she also founded the Association of Small Computer Users in Education, which is still in existence. Ooh, interesting. And she wrote four books. Four books. I bet these are nail-biting page turners. Do we have any titles? We have the titles. Okay, what do we got? We got Computer Graphics and Applications of Matrix Methods, colon, Three-Dimensional Computer Graphics and Projections, Okay, that not not the not the nail biting uh, page turner I was looking for, but that's all right. There's three more books left. All right, how about electrical circuits and applications on the matrix method: colon analysis of linear circuits. Okay, we we we, we 
Let, let's keep going. We'll, we'll find right, something. Right. This, this one, this one, this will probably you know speak to you, given how you know you work at a place that that has a restaurant attached. Okay. Food service management and applications of matrix methods: colon food service and dietary requirements. You know, she really <laughs> seems to like colons. I, I just put them in there because every single one has a colon because it's such a long title. You got to break it up. <laughs> okay. So. And as um, far as I can tell, that one is completely out of print because I'm like, hmm, I wonder if any of them are here. And, you know, I looked online and I was like, out of print. <laughs> Would you like to buy a used copy for hundreds of dollars? <laughs> and so, so the final, the fourth one, uh, unfortunately, viewers, the, these are not the nail biting page turners <laughs> I was hoping for. Uh, clearly, I was confused as to what I sh could realistically hope for. Um, but the fourth one. Markov chains and applications of matrix methods, colon, fixed point and absor and absorbing Markov chains. She's really got a thing for matrix methods. I imagine it's due to the fact that um, her her thesis for, for being a, you know, a PhD student was inductive interference on computer generated patterns. So, you know, matrixes, patterns. It's very important to have an eye towards patterns and working with computers. All right, all right, fair enough. So, is there anything else that we have to say about Sister Mary Kenneth Keller? Well, that was the main points. The fact that, you know, we, we, we've done a lot of things with the, the sciences that people are like, oh, yes, that's totally, you know, science stuff. But the fact that a lot of our tech is also based off science that many, you know, very religious people helped find and make matrices for. Yes. Which I assume is very important. Anyway. Go down below and leave your favorite comment about computer stuff. Maybe in binary, and then we'll have to look up and see what it says. Yes. <laughs> are there any uh, Catholic scientists that you would like us to talk about? We know there are more out there than what we know there are more out there. We have some in the wings for, for us to talk about later, but maybe you have one that is special to you. And while you're down there in the comment section, make sure that, that you go and you hit that. Uh, the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you get notified when new episodes come out. Give this episode a like, because who doesn't like a good Catholic scientist? And I'm sure liking does something to, to computer matrices. Yes, it probably <laughs> affects computer matrices and uh, and uh, algorithms. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so hit that like button. And remember, until next time, to live your faith. Love your faith. And share, share that, that love. love.